It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And I am in Poway. Today we are going to be groundbreaking on a brand new project. So I thought I would take a special time to get into a little more detail with you about the plants that I've selected. These, this particular project is going to be a xeriscape. Now, for those of you that don't know, that means that I needed to choose plants that will be reliant solely on the moisture in the air, humidity, and rain water, rainfall for their irrigation needs. So that makes it, you know, a little tougher in terms of choosing. But another fun thing about a xeriscape is it's all about the rocks. So these plants are going to be staged as specimens in this installation, which is a little different than how I normally do it. So if you have interest in doing a xeriscape and turning off the irrigation in your yard, here are some ideas. Now this magnificent beast, this 15 gallon aloe, this was a new, a new plant to me. And I had to track people down at Waterwise to even find out what it was. And there was a mixed reviews as to what it even was. But what we decided was it was an aloe arborescence ferox hybrid. So look at the blooms that are coming on this magnificent thing. Look at that. And it's so big and kind of blue. Um, Aloes, for the most part, especially ones that are this established, should do absolutely fine without irrigation. Now, what's going to happen in stressful times is the leaves, you can see that they have a tendency to turn kind of rosy color. I anticipate that this plant will turn rosy in the summer. Another good idea when doing a xeriscape is to plant now. It's uh, currently December in San Diego and we're coming into our rainy season. We might get a few drops in January, February, March. So a good time for these plants to get established and get a good drink before they go into summer. Now, another thing is because this is a xeriscape, I'm not going to be planting any cuttings and I am not going to completely hack the crap out of the root systems. I'm still gonna shrink them by half, but I'm not gonna do tremendous amounts of damage. Now, this guy in here, this is Tricholobivia alba, and this is also a new introduction at Waterwise Botanicals. Don't get too excited. I took the only two they had, so sorry. But alba tells me that this plant is going to flower white, and I am super excited about that. In a xeriscape, you can pretty much always bank on cactus with the exception maybe of Pereschia that needs water, but n most of the cactus I've ever worked with uh, are going to do just fine without any irrigation. Um, you notice that we've got an agave variegate here. This is one I don't use that often because I don't generally have big enough areas to plant it. This is going to get about three times this size and this one is Vilmoriniana. So yay variegate. Um, this Rubra violacea. Uh, I actually spent a lot of my clients money on this plant because it is so spectacular. It's a brand and all, also a new introduction at Waterwise and I am not exactly sure what the bloom is going to do but I know it is going to be incredible. Then these are additional different variety of, um, of Tricholavivia. We also have uh, some Trichoceras. I guess these are probably the Trichoceras here that have the bigger, girthier branches, and then the Lobivias are the smaller ones. I have just regular old aloe vera. You know, aloe vera is such a common plant, but I don't know if you can see it because of the longissimum, but look at that beautiful bloom. These are gonna bloom yellow, they're mag majestic, they're tough. This is another plant that will turn kind of a rosy color when it's stressed, and they will grow into big stands. That agave that you're looking at right now is uh, cel Celsii, and it is magnificent. It has just got the prettiest, smoothest color uh, and shape of leaf also pups so we should be able to get a stand of those in the spot where we're going to plant them 
Uh, the Dazzlerian longissimum, these eventually turn into something of a tree over time. They just look like a fountain, a, a water fountain to me. So this is a really, really great plant in a xeriscape for some drama. And aloe dahlia, I, you can see I've got some five gallon aloes here. These I picked because of their maturity, even as a five gallon specimen. They already look really, really big. You can see how they're gonna color up with stress. The stress that the plants are experiencing right now isn't from lack of water because these have been irrigated at the nursery. This is from some drops in temperature. We've gotten down pretty low over uh, a few nights. Then I would have liked to have gotten bigger agave colorado hybrids. This is the best that they had, but these will get quite large and this is another pupping plant. And I just think that the striations on the leaves are so magnificent. And also you've noticed I have a lot of green, 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 and I wanted to pull in some blue. I even pulled in uh, some Opuntia. These Opuntia get hot pink flowers. They are also spineless, which was important to me. I didn't want glockids flying everywhere, but these Opuntia are gonna be really fun and they have a great personality. Then there's mama's favorite, the Piloso Ceris azurus, the blue torch cactus that I absolutely adore. And yeah, they're a little small, but they're going to grow pretty quick and will hit 10 to 12 feet in height before they're done. So, you know, the combination of the blues and the greens and then all the blooming colors, yellow, oranges, hot pinks. Oh uh, my gosh, I'm just getting so excited walking down this line. Then... Oh yes, these are the, what did we say these were, Hannah? Cactus. Yes, the, yeah, I don't know my cactus. I got Tricholobivias, Trichoceras, I've got the Apuntia, uh, the Lobivias. So I guess these are also Trichoceras, huh? Spicanius, these guys here. I just thought that it was a nice enough contrast. Um, also columnar, uh, but a completely different look than the blue, so I'm anticipating a different flower as well. Then, while I was waiting for the crew to arrive, I got busy with my clippers and deadheaded these Echinocactus crisonii, the barrels. I found five giant barrel cactus at Waterwise bare root, which is the way I prefer to deal with them. Roots are optional with these plants and I don't need a great big box with a bunch of soil in it. So I said, yes, I will take them. So that's a little bit more about my Xeriscape choices. And it's gonna take these plants a little longer to grow than if they were getting irrigated but that's okay. Remember, if you do a Xeriscape garden, do not go cheap on the rocks. We are expecting a, a giant truck of giant rocks, tons and tons of rocks. And these plants are going to be basically the candles on the birthday cake after I install the rocks. Look at this giant space that I have to fill. I have all of this. I have behind the fence. So yeah, I'm super excited. This is going to be stunning and so super low maintenance. Now the client knows that she's going to have to pull weeds in the spring after it rains. She understands that and has a crew of gardeners that are willing to take that on. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity reporting from Poway, California with your Xeriscape succulent tip of the day.